everybody, this is Chef Leanne coming to you from the Blue Flynn Kitchen. Today I am going to show you how to work with chocolate. Basically we're going to melt the chocolate and then bring it to the right working temperature. Okay, so what we're going to do today is just dark chocolate. It's the easiest chocolate to work with. And to make sure that you know the difference between couverture chocolate and coating chocolate. The main difference is couverture chocolate, which is real chocolate, contains cocoa butter. The other chocolate, which is coating or molding chocolate, is made with hydrogenated oils. And if you're unsure, if you're shopping for chocolate and you're unsure what it is, all you have to do is look at the ingredients. And if it says cocoa butter, you're working with real chocolate. If it says oils, then that's coating chocolate. So the big difference between the two is that the chocolate, Kuberger chocolate with cocoa butter needs to be tempered, okay? Whereas coating or molding chocolate, you can just melt it and start working with it, okay? So I'm gonna teach you how to temper your chocolate so that you can work with it, okay? First, melting chocolate. When you melt chocolate, two ways you can melt it, either on a double boiler or in a microwave. The key thing when using a double boiler though is to make sure that your bowl fits properly onto your pot. You don't want where there's a lot of gap where the steam can come out because if steam gets into your chocolate, it will seize your chocolate and becomes very thick. Then you don't want a pot that's too small where your bowl comes out farther, especially if you're working on a gas stove, then the dry heat will get to the sides of the bowl, then you'll have better chances of it burning. Okay, so you want to avoid that. So this fits really nice, keeps the steam in. If you're going to do by microwave, make sure you have a good oven proof, microwave proof bowl that doesn't get too hot, okay? Because you need to melt dark chocolate at about 45 degrees Celsius. And when you're melting it, never go higher than medium heat. Okay? So if you know your microwave oven very well, you know about how high you can go. So on this oven here, it was just about 400 watts. So that's about a medium low. And as you're melting it, you want to do it in increments of 40 seconds down to 20 seconds. So when you first start, you have coins like this. Okay. So now on the market, you can get coins of chocolate like this. They may come in larger discs. If you do get the block chocolate, you'll want to cut those into smaller pieces similar to this. Another key um, equipment is thermometers. This is a probe thermometer and this is an infrared thermometer. It's a lot easier to use. So right now, this is at 30 degrees. So I'm gonna just pop this into the microwave just to bring it up a little bit hotter. As you start and it begins to melt, you wanna keep giving it a good stir so that you move around all the chocolate disc and then it melts evenly. So when you get chocolate melted to the correct temperature, you get a nice flow like this. And by stirring it, you keep the crystals together. When you melt chocolate, the, cocoa, the crystals in the cocoa butter start to separate. As it separates, you may begin to see streaks of fat in your chocolate. So by stirring it and bring it to the right temperature, you're actually bringing those crystals back in line. Okay, so now we're going to take a temperature, so it's at 40 degrees. You don't want to go higher than 45. Okay. So 40 to 45 degrees is fine. So now to bring the temperature down, I'm just going to add a bit of this whole chocolate. And the residue heat from the melted chocolate will melt the pellets. Okay. You don't want to add too many at one time because then it'll seize your chocolate and you have to start the process all over again. You'll bring the temperature down too fast. So what we're working at now is to bring the temperature down to about 29 degrees. So you just keep giving it a good stir. If you do it over the stove top, you can just have just a bit of steam coming out and then the bowl does not touch the water. Okay, you want to avoid touching the water, you just have the steam, and then you never worry about it burning. Okay, so take the temperature here. Okay, so coming down to 32 degrees. And the good thing about these little pellets is it does melt fast. 
Okay, so if I'm close to the temperature, but I still have lumps of chocolate in here, all I'm going to do is just press it down. Okay, and the reason why you want to get to a working temperature is all the products that you make, you don't have to worry about it melting again in room temperature. Okay. You'll get a nice snap to it. And if you're working with any kind of molds that have plastic, you'll get that nice shine. Okay. So what I'm going to do later, so I'm just going to pipe some disc. We're going to do a test first to make sure that it is tempered correctly. Okay, to, to conduct our test to see that if it is tempered correctly, just give it a stir. And with the back of my, the spatula, I'm just going to put a little bit here. So this is just parchment paper. You can use wax paper. Something that's neutral. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take a piece of material or a bowl that is really cold. Because once you put chocolate that's tempered onto something that's cold, it's going to go off temper. Okay, so now I'm just going to stick this in the refrigerator. And then with this, you can start whatever you, your project is going to be, whether it's uh, writing on uh, a cake or making bonbons. Um, what I'm going to do here is I am just going to make simple chocolate disc. You can also serve it as a simple candy. Okay, just a little bit. Be careful when you're using a cornet for chocolate. Don't fill it up too much because once it starts once you start squeezing, it can ooze up to the top of the bag, and you got a big mess to work with. Yeah, then if you're gonna put anything on there, like we have these little crunchy pearls, you wanna put it on there before the chocolate starts to set, because once it sets, and if you're doing anything with a mold, so I'm just going to brush this in the mold because we're going to fill this up with a nice filling later. So basically all I want to do is get a shell. And the advantage to brushing it in is that it avoids air bubbles. Because sometimes if you just pour the chocolate in, you can get air bubbles. So this is coat number one. Depending on what you're making, you can do two or three coats. And this I will also put in the refrigerator. We can check our little test paper. You can peel it off the paper, it's not tacky at all, and that's how you know you have it tempered at the correct temperature. Get a little bit of snap, and that's it. If you want any more information on how to melt and temper chocolate, just check out our website at coldblueflamekitchen.com.